Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection on Wednesday the 15th of March. How much it is March? Yes. Uh, my name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we're going to do what we normally do, and that is to do our daily lectionary text for today, talk about it a little bit, and see what the Lord might reveal to us as we read his word together. And uh, we're grateful for this uh, opportunity to, uh, to be in God's word. So let me start with a word of prayer. Uh, gracious Lord, we thank you so much for this day and this time. I thank you that we do have your word to us, that we can hear your voice, that we can listen to your voice, that we can be transformed uh, by your voice, that you would shape us and mold us and recreate us into the image of your son, Jesus Christ. So we thank you and we praise you, and it is in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. We'll start today with Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my sighing. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I plead my case to you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil will not sojourn with you. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouths. Their hearts are destruction. Their throats are open graves. They flatter with their tongues. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, so that those who love your name may exalt in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover them with favor as with a shield. Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his steadfast love. Our Hebrew scripture prophecy today comes from Jeremiah chapter 8, 4 through 7, and then verses 18 through chapter 9, 6. You shall say to them, thus says the Lord, when people fall, do they not get up again? If they go astray, do they not turn back? Why then has this people turned away in perpetual backsliding? They have held fast to deceit. They have refused to return. I have given heed and listened, but they do not speak honestly. No one repents of wickedness, saying, What have I done? All of them turn to their own course, like a horse plunging headlong into battle. Even the stork in the heavens knows its times, and the turtle dove, swallow, and crane observe the time of their coming. But my people do not know the ordinance of the Lord. My joy is gone. Grief is upon me. My heart is sick. Hark the cry of my poor people from far and wide in the land. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their images, with their foreign idols? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of my poor people I am hurt. I mourn, and dismay has taken hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the health of my poor people not been restored? 
Oh, that my head were a spring of water and my eyes a fountain of tears, so that I might weep day and night for the slain of my poor people. Oh, that I had a tent in the desert, a traveler's lodging place, that I might leave my people and go away from them. For they are all adulterers, a band of traitors. They bend their tongues, <coughs> excuse me, they bend their tongues like bows. They have grown strong in the land for falsehood and not for truth. And they proceed from evil to evil, and they do not know me, says the Lord. Beware of your neighbors and put no trust in any of your kin, for all your kin are supplanters and every neighbor goes around like a slanderer. They all deceive their neighbors and no one speaks the truth. They have taught their tongues to speak lies. They commit iniquity and are too weary to repent. Oppression upon oppression, deceit upon deceit. They refuse to know me, says the Lord. And from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us, in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. And our gospel text today comes from John 8, verses 12 through 20. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Then the Pharisees said to him, You are testifying on your own behalf. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid because I know where I have come from and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is valid, for it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. In your law, it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is valid. I testify on my own behalf, and the Father who sent me testifies on my behalf. Then they said to him, Where is your father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. He spoke these words while he was teaching in the treasury of the temple, but no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. And back to our psalm, Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord that I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger, you who have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. 
Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. And our final psalm today is Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence, and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth and the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. A sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, I wonder if we look at Jeremiah first in relation to what was just done in Psalm 51 and and see some of the connections there and then kind of connect it to some other things. So that would be all right? Yeah, Let's that try sounds that. good. So, um, so Jeremiah, uh, the, one of the reasons why Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet is because he does observe... Um, not just the uh, not just the foretelling of the fall of Jerusalem and its destruction. He actually does then witness it, mm-hmm. and um, and so uh, again, it's not just he knows something's going to happen. He actually sees right. it does happen, and so uh, starting in, in chapter eight that we did today and going through with chapter nine. Um, this whole reason why the judgment continues to come is that the people, um, you know, God is saying that, you know, even even the normal person when they fall will get up and the person that goes astray, they'll turn back. But there's something really complicated here about or disbelieving. Who does this? Who doesn't repent when they've done wrong? Um, but obviously the people of God, the people there in Jerusalem are not... Uh, not repenting there there's no um, there's no indication that they think they're doing anything wrong that needs to be repented of um, I love that image you know even the stork knows its times the turtle of the swallow the crane they know the kind the time of their coming but my people don't know the ordinances of the Lord um, but then what is Jeremiah's response to that it's it's not uh, his response is not anger as we might expect it's this this lamenting this mournful cry it's uh you know oh that my head were a spring of water and my eyes a fountain of tears that so that i might weep day and night for the slain of my poor people um you know my my grandfather uh, grandpa george would regularly sing that psalm you know there is a bomb in gilead that makes the sin sick whole um and so obviously coming from this line uh, is there no bomb is there no way that the people can be healed and i think jeremiah is saying it's like you know there's options still there is there is there's opportunity for repentance there's opportunity to be healed yet the people just don't do it um oppression upon oppression deceit upon receipt 
deceit. They refuse to know me, says the Lord. Um, and, and then if you flip back to Psalm 51, obviously Psalm 51, and I know we've talked about Psalm 51 in, in many uh, circumstances, but it's always interesting to see how it's going to be connected to another piece of scripture. Right. Uh, psalm 51, obviously, uh, uh, a psalm of David when he was confronted with his sin of, of um, you know, adultery with Bathsheba and the murder of, of Uriah. Um, and, and what do we see? But we see the repentance in David's heart that was not evident uh, in Jeremiah's day. Uh, but even that acknowledgement of guilt at the very beginning of it it's like I have sinned I've been you know I was born guilty um, that your judgment is right and true uh, you know you um, uh, you know you you you're justified in the sentence that you give but there's repentance and and I think how regularly how frequently do we see this theme come up in scripture the, the need to repent Many do, right. but certainly not all. Uh, certainly not to the um, to the Psalm fifty one kind of level of things. It's it's right. They, you know, I think back to Judges. You know, they 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 fall into sin. Then they cry out for deliverance, and the Lord hears them. It's like a redemption cycle. Mm -hmm. um, David is clearly confessing sins, repenting of them. But then there are times that people don't. And, 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 and I think Jeremiah's response to that, at least what we're, we're, we're observing today, that response of you know, the lament, the, the mourning, uh, the sadness that he feels. And I wonder today, I wonder if you know, Christians are truly sad for the state of our you know, community, our communities or, um, or our country or the world. You know, I know that we can be uh, broken up over particular instances of things, but is there a? Uh, but a lot of times I, I hear on, on the radio quite frequently more like anger and more condemnation and uh, just a, a judgmental kind of um, attitude or opinion in turn, in, the, in the mouths of of, um, of Christian leaders and and as opposed to what we see in Jeremiah. Is an, is an interesting mix of the acknowledgement of how bad things are, mm -hmm. uh, but then, but then his own mourning and his his lament and his his intercession for the people, right. um, and ultimately, I guess, his trust that God will continue to work. Right, and, and I think that's really where it comes from. It's like Jeremiah knows that God's like Jeremiah, like David, knows that God's judgments are just and right. Um, and David um, is, a, is appealing to the character of God, um, and I, as I believe Jeremiah is as well. Um, right. But, but in the midst of waiting, it's, the, it's that sadness more than the anger, at least in this particular chapter. Right. It's Jeremiah. He knows the goodness of God as well. And so there is this sadness because you continually... You know, you continually choose this, this perpetual black backsliding, you know, that phrase in there. Yeah, right. It's just, you know, it, there, it said something, oh goodness, I don't know if it was the, it might have been one of the Psalms too, though. Um, no one speaks truth, you know, you, there is, you can't trust that they go around like a slanderer, um, commit iniquity, too weary to repent. Mm. Um, right. They're so worn out doing bad things that they're that too they tired to repent. Say, it's like, sorry. I'm right? so sorry I'm worn out for my I've, sin. I've done too much bad. <laughs> what a great but, image, right? What a terrible image. Right, it is, but it's, um, but yeah, beware and no trust and all of that. I mean, it's, it's bad. It's, mm -hmm. it's bad, but he recognizes that it's bad. And there is, there is that sadness. And I do think that there are people that feel that sadness, but I do think that people jump very quick to condemnation and mm -hmm. judgment um, because, you know, well, they, we've talked about that before. Well, I'm not as bad as them. No, right, right. <laughs> well, they are doing this, and, and we want to seclude our, you know, or separate ourselves away from that. But, right. Um, but, right, there, you know. Yeah, for the hurt of my poor people, I am hurt. 
How right. many more in dismay has taken hold of me? Uh, yeah. I wonder, you know, and again, I think there's, there's, uh, there's that, uh, that sense of mourning, that compassion, that recognizing that um, even though obviously Jeremiah, God calls Jeremiah because Jeremiah is listening to God and Jeremiah is being obedient to God and, and he's got a difficult message to give, but it's not, Jeremiah continues to identi identify himself with the people, the people. Right. which I think is probably sadly lacking in a lot of our uh, leadership today rather than identifying with the people. There's a superiority complex mm -hmm. uh, that I can't believe these people are so bad. Why can't they be more like me, you know, righteous one? Or even like in the political leaders, I can't believe that you would even dare question my judgment where I know what's best for you. But here it's uh, Jeremiah identifies with the people um, and, and mourns, um, yeah, mourns their uh, yeah, their disobedience and things, um, crying out for God's uh, mercy upon them, um, which is exactly what we get if we go to Romans, right? Uh, as as Paul so eloquently puts it, that um, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, so much more surely have been reconciled, we will be saved by His life. Uh, you know, God proves His love for us that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. How much better news? Right. How much better news can we get? Right. Um, if, while we are doing all of those things of Jeremiah, <laughs> while we are doing all of those things that we see these people doing in Jeremiah, right. Christ. Still, willfully, obediently carried out the will of the Father. Mm -hmm. He obediently died that we have salvation, right. even in all of the awfulness of those people in Jeremiah that we see in ourselves, even now, right. Christ still went to the cross. Right. Um, and, and, what a, and what a reminder for those of us who do believe that we have our acts together, right? You know, <laughs> how, how easy would it have been for Jeremiah to just kind of go like, oh man, you know, you guys are really terrible. Right. Be more like me, right? But it's, it, he identifies with the people and mourns with, with them. them. Or mourns for them, at the very least. You know, because they're not mourning. They're unrepentant. They don't even think they did anything wrong. Right. You know, yeah, the, it asks the question in there, what have we done? Right, you know, right. It was in Absolutely. verse 5, right yeah. at the very beginning, verse uh, 5 or 6. What have we done? And and so so I think, you know, in, in context of Romans, Paul is is certainly writing to people who, um, who have faith in Christ, or at least have expressed faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. And he's reminding them that um, having faith in Christ... Uh, means that everybody, everybody is in the same boat. That you can't think of yourself as not needing the grace that God has provided. So right. whether you're a, uh, you know, whether you're a pagan or whether you're a recent convert or whether you are experienced in the law, whether you have memorized all of scripture, it's all dependent upon the grace of God through Jesus Christ, through his death on the cross. And so then how should we treat one another? You know, if you come right. across as being, uh, you know, I'm, I'm superior to anybody else or, uh, you know, casting the judgment down on other people, all that kind of stuff, it's, it's almost as if you've put yourself beyond need for God's grace. Right, as if uh, uh, somehow the law has the ability to save or righteousness, right. self Right. Proclaimed righteousness. Yes. Like yes, Jesus sense. might have Jesus might have saved me, but now that I've been saved, I'm so good. And right. you know, it's like no, no, no. You are always in need right. of the grace of God. Um, and because of that, then um, how then should we try to reconcile even with one another? If mm -hmm. Christ has reconciled us to God while we were sinners, now that we have been reconciled, what is our goal as Christians? And right. that is to be. Uh, identifying increasingly more with one another in Christ together, right? Um, right. Hmm. You know, which means you know you're still gonna you're still gonna suffer, and you're gonna have to have endurance, and that's gonna produce character, and that's gonna be hopeful. Um, so again, Paul's saying it's not easy. You right. know, it, none of this becomes easy. It just becomes increasingly more about Jesus right. 
and and less about um, you know less about any particular problem that you're experiencing and more about well what is the purpose of this is to become more and more like Christ well and regardless of the suffering and the hope is always there right the hope um, beyond what is offered here the hope beyond what is here on earth but the hope in the right. hope in the eternity because of this gift um, right. but that hope is always present well can you maintain perfect righteousness Natalie like on your own like yeah, we're gonna go with the, with the strong no on that <laughs> but, no but you know but seriously it's like you you've been growing in faith right at right. what point at what point can you become dependent upon your own righteousness never what never. like but but I thought that was all about making myself look good guys right that now that now that I have all these things just look at me or live your life like I live my life because I'm just so good right now right some people feel that Some way. Some people feel Some that people way, right? Some people do feel that way. But mm -hmm. it is always, we are offered that righteousness. We are offered any glory that we're given through glory in Christ and right. by glorifying Him and by giving Him honor and praise for His righteousness and for right. that gift. And so, right, the goal is to continually be transformed and become more like Jesus. But there's never like, oh, I've attained it. I've mm. got my gold star and I'm done. There's... There's never this full, I think there's too much humanity in us. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I, I think every day you get up, hey, today's going to be a good day. And some days, the walk from the bedroom to the kitchen, all right, we'll try again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> try again tomorrow. <laughs> some days you make it all the way to the afternoon. And then, you know, try again tomorrow. Today's mm -hmm. going to be a good day. Because it's all available through faith, you know, by grace, Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. Um, so if we jump back to John, mm -hmm. and John chapter 8, uh, you know, it's, um, I, I know that you probably, many of you are keeping up with your, your lectionary readings and things, but as we've been going through John, uh, just, you know, you've got the woman caught in adultery, uh, you've got the unbelief of, of, of people that, you know, even it, it, it all, it, the more, the more I look at the gospels, um, you know, I see just these interconnected, interrelated stories and everything that comes before is kind of free game to talk about, you know, it's like, right. So, so when Jesus starts talking about being the light of the world, um, you know, you've got to go back even to John, you know, chapter one, that uh, he was uh, the light of all people. You know, in, you know what, what came into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. Light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Um, we have conversations that Jesus has with other religious leaders, including Nicodemus, who was asking questions. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is going back to, uh, to the very beginning of God calling the people of Israel to himself and it's like this has been the plan all along that right. that you would be a light to the Gentiles that you would shine in the darkness that you would draw people unto yourself that they might glorify God and and Jesus is talking to the people who have either forgotten this right. or or do not mourn appropriately the state of the world they have they have walled themselves off so much from the world and they sit in judgment over that world look at those pagans out there mm -hmm. look at those people who are not like us right. we are in this special place and they are in a special place they do have god's word they do have the covenant promises they do have all of these things yet they've forgotten the very purpose of their their sonship in christ mm -hmm. well in god um, and, and, here, and here comes Jesus saying, like, look, um, I'm the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. And they're just going like, well, we're going to have this legalistic discussion about are you testifying about yourself or other people testifying right. about you? And he's like, if, if you go back, all of the Old Testament is testifying to what he is right. and what he is doing. Mm -hmm. And if you don't look at what you should know already 
um, then it's it's you're still walking in darkness. Right. You can't even say like, well, where is your father? You should know where the father is. You, what's the point in having all of the scripture, all of the covenant, all of the promises, all of the prophets, all of the teaching that's been going on? What is the point of all of that if they still can't recognize the heart of the father and if they can't see that in Christ where he is demonstrating the fulfillment of the whole purpose that they've been called to from the very beginning. It's, it's, it's fascinating. Right. It is always um, interesting that, you know, and it, it references here in this John passage, the Pharisees, and, and it's, it's so interesting to me. These are the people that they are the leaders. They are the ones that are, they are proclaiming, they are saying all the right things. And yet he's standing right in front of them and they're like, yeah, but, yeah, but, like, can you prove what you're saying? But like you said, you have the whole of scripture, you know it better than anybody else. And yet he's staring you in the face and you don't get it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so, but then that gets into that, that righteousness that we're talking about, you know, and, and. Jesus is calling their righteousness into question, but mm -hmm. they're clinging so tightly to that. No, we are good. We are righteous. Like, look at us. Look at what we are doing mm -hmm. rather than recognizing. Well, and, and Psalm 51 would remind us that even David, mm -hmm. as righteous as he could be, still falls short, still right. needs to depend upon God's mercy, still needs to cry out to have a new heart created within him. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so again, even the pinnacle of, of Jewish, um, you know, exalted ones, you know, right. David, I mean, the king, David, the chosen, um, the I mean, he, was, right. he was anointed, he was, anointed. Yeah, right. he was anointed, he was chosen, he was still recognizes his humanity, still recognizes his sin, still calls out to God. And these people are, uh, you know, there and John are just like, well, by what testimony are you? Are you doing these things? Like, who right. gives you the who authority? Gives you that authority? Who gives you the authority to talk about all this? Like, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Like, and, do you know and, who we are? <laughs> and, Je and Jesus basically responds, "It's like, dude, you should know better, right? Because I, I I'm not testifying. Um, even if I did testify on, on, on my behalf, it's like your law was written that the Father testifies on my behalf." It's like follow follow the law, which is following the will of the Father, which is all pointing to Jesus, which is all about our need to depend on God, uh, but for His grace. Um, you know, our, our works do not save us, but we do the work of the Father because that's what we were created to do. Uh, yeah. Wow. Isn't that, isn't that fascinating? So I don't know. So I guess from all of this. Um, I guess uh, you know those of us in, in Christian leadership especially should uh, not really sit in judgment over others but mourn the brokenness that still exists um, you know I think about um, you know Jeremiah is it knows that destruction is coming and he's not going like see I told you so you know right. I, you know and, and, and he did he did tell them so right. but rather than exalting in their downfall you know he he mourns, he mourns with them he mourns, mourns for yeah them. mourns for them mourns with them you know experiences his own hardships like Romans would talk about you know um, yeah um, so uh, you know um, and, but it's not mourning unto despair it's mourning unto hope it's, it's, it's mourning. There is hope. There is there hope. Is hope. Uh, and, and in whom do we put our hope? It has to be Jesus. Right. Christ came that there is hope. Right. He came that there is a light. We right. are called to share that light. Right. And so... Because if Natalie's righteousness can't save her, <laughs> then, then by golly, we all need, we all need something greater than that. We need... We, we need, all live. Yeah. Broken. Including your pastors. Brokenness. Including your pastors. We live in brokenness. You know, there are every day, like you were saying, every day it becomes a struggle, uh, a struggle unto righteousness. And so, but it's, it's uh, uh, but again, it's, 
you know, where, where do we put our hope? You know, where, where do we find that redemption that we all need? Uh, and then how do we uh, respond um, when confronted with the, the difficulties of other people? And I think we should all be uh, more humble, mm -hmm. uh, more compassionate, uh, a lot more uh, patient, right. uh, especially with our children, uh, other family members, right. church members, you know, um, uh, expectantly waiting right. uh, for God to be increasingly revealed in their lives uh, and praying for that. Uh, that's right. probably it. That's probably it. Yeah. Mm. We can't. We can't do it on our own. No. That's not. Um, and we were never sent to do it on our own. It was never intended yeah. for us to do it on our own. Right. I think that's a huge point to remember. It was never intended for us to do it on our own. It was always intended for us to rest in the presence of God. Yeah. Um, as it says at the end of Psalm 27, you know, I believe that the, I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. It's uh, um, even in the midst of the difficulties that we can experience. It's all about hope confidence that God's got this under control. He sent Jesus for a reason. Trust in him. Trust and believe. Follow. Uh, be obedient. Share the good news. Um, oh, and without hope, I mean, can you imagine the despair? Mm -hmm. And so I think you go back to like that Jeremiah and the the verbiage and, the, and just the despair, the lamenting, the mourning, the, you know, yeah. thank the Lord we don't live in yeah. that reality yeah. that we live in the reality of that Romans and in that hope and in that John that Jesus is the light right? and we are offered hope right. um, like lament and mourning without hope would be miserable right. yeah. there has to be hope on the other end right. and there is there is and in there Jesus is. yeah there is there's hope in Jesus there's faith in him and his grace and mercy towards us yeah awesome good stuff today mm-hmm covers it all doesn't it <laughs> it's sort of the whole gospel message right it's just kind of this whole thing, thing. like yeah. yeah calling purpose fall repentance you know because of what jesus did it's all right it's all it's all there all throughout scripture grace and mercy extended mm -hmm. have anything else well, that's pretty that's good. Pretty that's like pretty rough. Like I said, it covers message. it from beginning to it end. It covers from beginning to end. <laughs> yep. Well, I will close this. That'd be great. Here. Okay, thank you. Gracious Father, thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you that it was never intended for us to do this alone, that you have always been there, and that the hope and the mercy was always intended to be offered. The grace was always intended to be offered. I pray that um, you do uh, come alongside us. Help us to treat um, other people with compassion and love and that we do those things in humility and we recognize um, that any righteousness that we have comes from you. Any glory that is to be given is to be given to you. Help us to love those around us better, to know you better, to love you better, and in that sharing that light with others so that they can also come to know you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us today. I uh, look forward to uh, continuing to do this. Um, if you do have any questions or comments or concerns, don't hesitate to call the church. We'll be happy to listen, with you, listen to you and pray with you and uh, discuss important issues of faith. But um, thanks for tuning in today. We'll talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye-bye.